You want my two cents? Fine. Sometimes, two cents can make all the difference in the world. This episode of Horrible Writing. That will that never, never work. work. You can't, can't publish that. Seriously? No, 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 no. Oh my god, that's bad. You probably, probably should find a hobby. You ever, ever learn how to spell? Stop. Be happy. Quit while well, you're ready. Don't, 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 don't bother me. I've seen that in the first. Do you really want to do that? And my third grade, get it up. Welcome to Horrible Writing, the rawest, most candid, in-your-face writing show on the interwebs because none of us have time to suck. Let's do this. Hey everybody, welcome to episode 118 of Horrible Writing. I am your host, Paul Sading. I hope this finds you well. So, this episode, we might actually be talking about some stuff that's beyond where you're at in this part of your writing journey, and that's okay. But I'll encourage you, just like I encourage folks all the time over in the Horrible Writing Writer Support Group, if you're not there, drum roll, you know what I'm going to say. Why aren't you there? Come on. We are really cool. Plus, You get more exposure to things like what I'm about to talk about in this 118th episode of the show. Amazon ads. Now, don't groan. Don't run away, please. If you're not ready for ads because you literally don't have anything published right now, that's okay. What if you're not going to publish for another year or two? Things are going to change, Paul. The landscape's going to be a little different at least than it is right now. Yes. You're absolutely right. It will be. But I argue the more you expose yourself to this stuff, these theories, these concepts, these tips, tools, and tactics, now the more ready you'll be when that time comes from me, for you. And those of you who do have a book out, a novella out on that storefront, and you don't want to get into the ads game until you have your trilogy done because you've been listening to Paul and you realize, hey, I need to have a series before I can get serious about chasing the money that can come with well-crafted stories in the 2020 writing market. Absolutely, you can. But I would say not to wait until that series is done, to start playing around with ads. The sooner you learn how ads work and how they respond, the better, the more responsive you'll be when that time comes. For those of you who I use as that generic example, you know, the single book or the novella out and you're working that trilogy and you're not going to get serious about ads until that trilogy is out, Um, Are you really willing to found and ground the health of that trilogy you've been working so hard on in a very thin, narrow scope of knowledge of how ads work? Or would you rather test some things out before you get that trilogy out there and you want people to actually buy it? Kind of a rhetorical question, right? We want. To at least have a working idea, an idea, be a, a comfort level with ads before we actually need those ads to push our books in front of the right readers. Now, yes, I'm a kinesthetic learner, so this works for me. I've got to do something to kind of get it. And I know a lot of you are as well. And when it comes to this, you really are. And You know, let me, I should have said this at the beginning, but I just, I think of all of you as family anyways, and I think you hang with these episodes, uh, knowing my bent on these things. This is me speaking to everyone, not just people who are chasing the indie dream. Even if you're a trade, dreaming of a trade route, trade career, trad, however you want to say traditional publishing, um, unless you're at the big houses, 
that can put marketing money behind you. If you're at those small houses, they're not going to. They're going to put a little bit, maybe, but a lot of that blood, sweat, and tears is going to come from you. Why wouldn't you want to understand this so you could at least talk to them if you see that your book is not doing as well as you think it should? So you've got to know the game. So get in and start playing around as soon as you have something on Amazon, but do so responsibly. I don't want anybody throwing tons of money away because they're not hearing what I'm saying about ads. You can do ads at low to no cost, even small profit with a single book out there. I've done it. I know it can work. But you've got to be very strategic and very smart and very careful and very engaged in how you do it. But this episode is about those of you who had the quitter mindset. You're just going to stop doing something because something doesn't work. I could have easily taken that route and I didn't get serious about ads. Those of you who have listened for a long time, you know this. I didn't get serious about ads until this past year, summer-ish time frame of 2019, when I really started playing around with them, I'd had ads long before that, but onesie twosies, and I would just let them run for weeks at a time and check in weeks at a time. It wasn't until the summer that I got serious about it and I saw the distinct difference that active engagement on my part as the author slash ad manager can have on those. And I want to use this one example for you when you're looking at your ads and you're frustrated and you're ready to quit because nothing's moving and you don't understand why. My horror anthology, 12 Deaths of Christmas. If you are a horror fan, go grab it. It's a really cool set of stories and it can be read at any time of the year. But that's my example for this episode because. Way, way in the way back machine in early 2019, when I started trying to test these things out, I ran two ads because I was trying to learn how the ads work. And I took 790 keywords. So I went and I scoured the internets for words that people would go into Amazon and search that might lead them to 12 deaths of Christmas popping up on their Kindle. 789 of them. I did two ads simultaneously, A and B comparisons. One ad was for 24 cents a click. The other one was for 26 cents a click. And here is some data for you that will blow your mind, I hope, in a good way, to encourage you to keep testing things. Now, Horror is not romance. Author Nicole Rain is a longtime listener of the show. Uh, She's got two books in her romance series out, paranormal romance series out, so go check those out. But her and I were having a discussion, and she's trying to buy bids for paranormal romance, and they're coming up on close to a dollar a bid. Uh, That's obviously incredibly steep in comparison to something like horror, which I was bidding at, you know, mid 20 cents a a bid. Something to think about as you plan your writing career out, right? Just keep in mind, we'll have a lot of discussions about this in the future. Especially if you're at the Horrible Writing Writer Support Group on Facebook. So I ran these two things and, you know, I noticed this months ago. I actually wrote a, a note to myself to do an episode on this, to have a quick talk about this One comparison just to help you see the difference, the profound difference your bid price alone can make. I wanted to isolate that. What you study, what you measure is what you do, right? So I wanted to study bid prices and understand how those made a difference. So everything else was the same. Literally, both uh, ads launched on the same day, both bids were structured the same and to the keyword of 789 of them, everything was exactly the same except for the bid price. One was 24 cents, the other one was 26. Well, 
Fast forward to recording in January of 2020, latest stats. That 24 cent bid ad had 3,100, almost 3,200 impressions. It had, I don't even remember now, you know, low number of clicks, and I didn't sell a single copy of the book. If that's the only ad I ever did, I would be disappointed in ads, and I would tell everybody who would listen, you don't know what you're talking about. Amazon ads don't work. But that's not what I was doing, right? Because I'm not, I wasn't serious about ads at the time, and I'm still not. I'm still trying to learn them and what works because I'm trying to push, obviously trying to push the scales. Another horror book, if those of you, for those of you who are into horror or have someone in your love life who is a, not your love life, but your loved ones who is a horror fan, you might want to check that out. I'm trying to learn hardcore on that one because I've got my fantasy stuff coming this year and I want to be good enough at ads to at least have a respectable return on them. But I could have quit with that one ad. And, and called malarkey on Amazon ads, but I didn't. I tested that 26 cent ad and the difference was night and day. 3,200 clicks on that 24 cent ad, almost 400,000 clicks, or uh, 400,000 impressions on the 26 cent bid. 3,200 impressions. I, I said clicks, I meant impressions versus 400,000. Well, that's great, Paul. Lots of people are seeing the book, but what's happening? Well, remember, I lost money on that 24 cent uh, because the click-through rate was 0.03. So 3% of people who saw it were clicking through to it. The 26 cent click-through was 12%. So four times as many people were clicking through to see what this book was about. And then the conversion is about 8%. So of those 12% that clicked on the book to see what it was, 8% of those went on to buy the book versus 0% for the 26. Because I was getting, statistically getting uh, more eyeballs on it, but the right eyeballs, so my keywords were doing decently well. Not the greatest, still work to be done but decently well. I had a positive return on investment for it. I was selling it still my highest earning ad for that particular book. It's my highest earning ad. It's still actually on to this day because it still keeps getting uh, impressions from time to time. So your uh, lesson for today, if you have anything on Amazon, I wouldn't do free because you're that's a guaranteed money loser unless you've got you know the uh writing budget to float that constant loss uh but if you've got a novella or a single book out there you need to get into the ads game don't be afraid get into the ads game bid low start super low i can't talk to every single category i'm sorry every single genre because i don't know your genres amazon is going to give you a default bid Don't do it. Shoot low, like 10 cents. Every single one of you, Paul's rule, (laughs) 10 cent bids. That's all I want you testing out. You might not get any impressions. Let it run for two weeks. Check it every night or every morning or on your lunch break. Give it two weeks. After two weeks, if nobody's seeing it, meaning no impressions, do a new ad, a new couple ads. Do two ads. Bump it up to 15 cents. Let those run for two weeks. Start playing with this stuff. You know, one ad at 15 cents, one ad at 17 cents. Now what's happening? Make sure everything else is consistent. Okay, but keep it reasonable. Set that daily limit at $5 a day. That way you wouldn't spend any more than $5 a day, which is something we're going to talk about in another episode uh, because you're not going to spend $5 a day, trust me. And uh, see how those flesh out and then incrementally keep increasing it. All right. There's your tip, tool, and tactic for today, episode 118. If you appreciate this show and what I do, please leave a rating and review. I've talked to a couple of folks over in the Horrible Writing 
for our support group on Facebook about the lack of ratings that this show has for as many episodes as it has. They're all great, the ones that have put ratings out there, but there ain't enough of them. And in order for this show to be found by other writers and for me to see that this is even worth continuing doing the show, I need I need that. If you can't support you know, through Patreon or going to pulsating.com and clicking on that support tab, the very next best thing you can do is leaving that rating and review, even if you're not an iTunes slash Apple podcast user. I know, I know, I know it's a pain. But if I'm giving you something of value, please reciprocate. Show me that this show needs to stay around or I'll just go focus on other things. All right. If you want to support the show, patreon.com forward slash Paul Sading gets you all kinds of exclusives. You can do one time thing on the website, of course, or you can find Patreon on the website, paulsading.com. Click that support tab. Patrons get all kinds of other exclusives, free audio dramas, free stories, things like that. Uh, but those folks allow me to keep doing this month in and month out. Those are the folks I really appreciate. So if you appreciate what this does for you, come give me some love. Let's start chatting over there. Until next episode, keep being epic. Transcription by Renzi Lee over at Renzi Lee Freelancing. For fast turnaround times on content writing, transcription, and editing services, email Renzi at renzileefreelancing at gmail.com. This has been Horrible Writing, and hopefully after this episode, you suck less than you did at the beginning. I am Paul Sadin, your host, Extraordinaire. You can find me over on the Twitterverse at Writing Horrible and over at paulsadin.com forward slash horrible dash writing. Until next time, suck less. Suck less.